Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see each one of you and welcome back to class. Uh, would somebody lead us in prayer before we begin, please? Can somebody lead us in prayer? Okay, let me pray. And Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for today, for this class for series as we enter this class to help this one as well. Understand everything that our marriage and access to this. Be with her and as she speaks of this, have our understanding to capture it and know it your Jesus. In the name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Um, so in yesterday's class, we uh, saw that ministering to children was a priority for Jesus. Uh, the disciples did not think that it was a priority. Uh, but uh, Jesus went ahead and took the time to minister to children. And uh, we see that uh, ministering to children should be also a high priority for us as a church because Jesus uh, you know, took the time to minister to children. It was a priority for him. And hence, ministering to children should also be a high priority for us as a church. Uh, we also went ahead and looked at more, uh, a few more reasons why ministering to children is important. Uh, today, we look at the real essentials in Christian ministry. Uh, and then move on to chapter two, where we look at the developmental needs of uh, uh, children. So we'll look at uh, what are the real essentials in children's ministry, uh, which is the last part of uh, chapter one. And then we'll move on to chapter two, where we look at the developmental needs of uh, children. Now, there are four essential foundations for all uh, church-based ministry to children. Um, and these ideas have taken from the free training at uh, Children's Desiring uh, God curriculum. Okay, So we look at the four essential foundations for all church-based ministry to children. Uh, the first one is... Uh, Children's ministry must be God-centered. Children's ministry must be uh, God-centered. That means that our teaching, uh, we must emphasize the greatness of God. We need to emphasize the character, the nature, the attributes of God uh, when uh, teaching children. Yes, uh, the story or the narrative that we are telling the children will be about a specific character in the Bible. It can be about David. It could be about uh, Joseph. Uh, it could be about to one of the prophets or the kings uh, or, um, you know, uh, the judges like Samson, Deborah. But, you know, we, uh, we need to draw them back uh, or we need to draw all of those lessons to God. It should be God-centered. That means it should emphasize the greatness of God uh, uh, so children are able to see how great, strong, big, uh, faithful, loving, uh, majestic uh, and wonderful our God is and the wonders that he does, the miracles that he does. Uh, also, what are his laws, his commandments, the teachings um, and what pleases God, what displeases him, why he did this to, uh, you know, such such a person? Why did this uh, situation turn around like this? Why did he punish them? So all of uh, what we are narrating or teaching uh, children, even though it's a, a, a narrative or a parable from the uh, Bible, it all needs to be God-centered, which means that it needs to emphasize who God is, basically uh, who God is and what he does. That means God's nature, his attributes, and all of his works. Uh, Psalm 34, 8. Can somebody read that, please? Psalm 34, 8. Psalms chapter 34, verse 8. Can somebody read that? Okay, it says, 
uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Okay, so the children uh, will not be able to experience God in a personal way uh, unless we guide them or unless we teach them about who God is and what he does. And that's when they will put their faith and trust. That's when they will experience God or, you know, they will uh, come to a realization of who God is, what he can do for them. So children should experience God in such a way as to develop a lifelong, uh, you know, desire for him, a lifelong relationship, a lifelong of uh, 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 of trust and putting their faith and trust in him so that when they go through times of trouble, you know, they'll be able to take a refuge in him or they can run to him. They can uh, seek his help. They can seek his guidance, uh, just like the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 34, verse 8. So the first essential foundation for all church-based ministry uh, or children's church-based ministry is that children's ministry must be God-centered. The second foundation is that um, a children's ministry must be must be Bible saturated. Okay, children's ministry must be uh, Bible saturated. This means that God's word must flood everything. Uh, that we do, you know, not just our teaching, but also uh, every activity that we do should be Bible based, whether it's a quiz, whether it's a skit, or whether it is some activity or some competition that you're having, you know, it should all be uh, Bible based. Now, what do I mean by it should all be Bible based? I, uh, you know, I'll just give you a couple of examples what we do at APC Children's Church, uh, you know, for um, our Christmas programs, we just don't have a Christmas party, but uh, uh, we use it as an opportunity for children to learn uh, something from God's word, or it can be an opportunity where they are ministering to uh, someone else. So for example, um, you know, um, uh, we had um, uh, one uh, uh, year, we had them uh, do, uh, you know, go through all the uh, the, go through the genealogy of Jesus that is given in Matthew chapter 1 and choose one character. Okay, so each class had to choose one character and they had to portray a scene or enact a scene regarding that character. And uh, there should not be any dialogues, they're just enacting it. Uh, and the other children who are watching them should, uh, you know, um, uh, should guess the character. So this way, you know, their children will also know who are uh, the people in the genealogy uh, of Jesus. And also they will uh, learn something about that character, even as they portray it. And others, uh, other children that are watching them enact, uh, you know, will also learn uh, something specific about that character. And... Um, you know, um, uh, we learn something about the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, another Christmas uh, uh, time when we had a Christmas program when we had, uh, you know, we got the children to, um, you know, um, just uh, enact the whole salvation uh, 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 part, right, from, uh, you know, Genesis to the birth of Jesus and uh, what Jesus did and what he accomplished on the cross, even his crucifixion. And so they enacted the entire scenes uh, of, uh, you know, uh, of the Garden of Eden, the, uh, what, uh, how Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden and uh, Jesus' birth, the whole uh, Christmas narrative, and the, also, uh, you know, his, uh, his death on the cross, and why he died on the cross. And, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, in that specific uh, Christmas program, we had invited uh, uh, children from, um, you know, uh, the slums. We had invited children from the TB colony. Um, also, uh, the children had invited their maids, children to uh, attend. And so we had a good around uh, 150 children attended and our children enacted this whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, skit where uh, uh, right from salvation till uh, the crucifixion fiction and the death of Jesus and why he died for us. Um, so we can get children to, you know, 
uh, engage in such activities which just helps them uh, not only just listen to uh, what is being taught during the classes but also for them to uh, experience for them to uh, to have uh, uh, you know a better understanding even as they act even as they say the dialogues even as they uh, enact those skits just to make it more personal uh, to have a more uh, a personal relationship with God and also to understand the Bible uh, and what is sin what is salvation why Jesus came uh, to the earth so you know uh, everything that we do uh, or everything that we teach and everything, all the activities should, uh, uh, you know, be centered around uh, God's word. And, uh, you know, uh, Paul's telling uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, uh, Paul reminds Timothy uh, that from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, uh, so we see here that, you know, uh, children need the Bible, uh, you know, because it's only God's word that can change their uh, hearts. Uh, and also we see that Paul writing this to uh, Timothy because he's in a situation where he knows that he's going to die soon. And um, he's writing this letter of Second Timothy to Timothy and the churches at Ephesus to encourage uh, Timothy. And he's telling Timothy, you know, he might not be there around to encourage him, to strengthen him, to help him, uh, you know, uh, handle this huge responsibility of the churches at Ephesus and also the areas, the seven churches surrounding uh, uh, Ephesus uh, and, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of dealing with all the false prophets, uh, the false teachers, uh, the false doctrines. He says, you know, you can hold on to uh, scripture. It's God's word, uh, you know, which you were taught from your very childhood. That is going to give you the wisdom uh, uh, for salvation. It's giving you the wisdom for salvation. It's also going to give you the wisdom to save you from different situations, uh, to help you, to guide you, and to lead you. So a children's ministry must be Bible saturated where we're teaching them God's word. It's God's word that will strengthen, help, encourage, uh, guide them, lead them, uh, give them the solutions for the, their problems and also build them up in their faith um, and uh, give them the strength to journey through their uh, different stages in life. The third uh, foundation is that children's ministry must be gospel driven. Okay, we must be intentional in proclaiming the gospel uh, to children and the families, the good news of Jesus uh, about salvation, uh, never lose an opportunity to share about salvation, share about what Jesus has done, uh, you know, and uh, get them to have a personal experience uh, with their Lord and their uh, Savior. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, can somebody read that please? Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I have complete, I have complete confidence in in the gospel. It is God's power to save all who believe, first the Jewish and also the Gentiles. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that you know it's uh, 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 Paul is saying that he's not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God uh, for salvation for everyone who believes. Okay, so uh, it's the word of God that will save children, uh, not only from sin uh, and bring them into a relationship with Jesus, but will also save them, uh, you know, from uh, every temptation that they will face, from every sin that they will face as they journey through their life and every difficult uh, situation. And we see that this is also a command of Jesus in Mark chapter 16, uh, verse 15. We read this yesterday. Can somebody read it, please? Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Can somebody read it? You say to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Thank you. So we need to, you know, preach. <laughs> we need to preach the gospel to the whole 
creation. Okay, so that is the third foundation that children's ministry must be gospel driven. Everything that we do, uh, whether in our teaching, uh, worship time, um, you know, the activities that we do, the outreaches that we plan for children, everything should be uh, gospel driven. Get them to go and share the gospel also with other children. Uh, that is what we do at APC Children's Church, you know, um, uh, for the last few Christmas uh, 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 outreaches, we've taken them to, uh, you know, uh, old age homes, we've taken them to orphanages, we've taken them to an orphanage where they had a, a special children, and our children minister to them, uh, you know, through, through worship, through skit, uh, to their giving. Um, and also, you know, just uh, praying for each child. So what we do is, you know, we go ahead, uh, uh, we go before to the, the specific places, we get the list of all the children, um, and we ask the caretakers there, you know, what is uh, the challenges that each child is facing, uh, what are their problems, what are their difficulties, and then we assign, uh, you know, children in our children's church who will be ministering to each child in the orphanage, and, uh, you know, a, a month ahead, we give them uh, uh, prayer points, uh, the name of the child that they'll be praying for, uh, the challenges or the needs, um, uh, the difficulties that child is facing, in that orphanage, we ask them to pray. And then when we take them for the outreach, uh, you know, uh, just before uh, Christmas, uh, the child who is, uh, or the children who are assigned to that specific child in the orphanage, orphanage they go and they pray for that child and they minister to them. And so this is a, a way where children, you know, not only just uh, experience salvation, but they're also able to uh, share the good news uh, with others and they're creating opportunities for them to go and share the good news, uh, uh, to minister to other children, to minister to the elderly. Uh, we do the same when we take, we took them to, uh, 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 you know, uh, old age home, a home for elderly uh, citizens, um, and they just minister there. And children enjoy this whole experience, it gives them more confidence. It helps them to know how to pray, how to minister. And so a children's ministry must be gospel driven. Whatever we do uh, should be to uh, share the gospel with them and also for give them opportunities to share the gospel with um, others. Okay. The fourth foundation uh, is that, um, you know, children's ministry must minister to the whole family. Children's ministry must minister to the whole um, family. We, we know that, uh, you know, God has called parents to be the uh, primary faith nurturers of of their own children. They are uh, accountable to God for uh, their spiritual upbringing and the spiritual nurture of their uh, children. Therefore, um, uh, you know, children's ministry must partner with the parents in assisting them to fulfill their God-given responsibility and role and fulfill their calling. Uh, this means that, uh, you know, we, uh, the children's church must also uh, serve not only the children, but also their parents. And, uh, you know, what we do at, uh, ch at APC Children's Church is we have a parent-teacher meeting, uh, you know, before we start the new uh, academic year that is in June. Uh, we have a meeting where uh, all the parents, uh, 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 when they come, we share with them, uh, uh, you know, what we taught the children in uh, the previous uh, academic year, what we plan to teach them uh, this uh, academic year, what are the, pro uh, the programs we have uh, lined up, and what is uh, how they can contribute. So basically, we tell them, you know, uh, uh, that uh, in our curriculum, we have um, a student workbook. Here. So each of your children will bring back home a student workbook. In the student workbook for each lesson, there is um, uh, a memory verse. So please help your children learn the memory verse each week. And also, you know, um, uh, when we finish class, there is an application that uh, they have to apply throughout the week. Uh, so ensure that you ch and help your children and encourage them to, you know, apply it uh, during the week. And on Saturday, we in their uh, student workbooks, they have a small section where they have to write down how they applied what they 
um, learnt. So uh, the parents can uh, help them uh, see that they have finished this, uh, you know, finished writing it, uh, just remind them to do it. Also, you know, if you're having Bible quiz, we get uh, the parents involved to encourage their children to learn their Bible portions. Um, and, you know, um, uh, uh, each uh, class we have uh, two children's church ministers uh, or in other words, they're called teachers, but we call them children's church ministers uh, who teach each class. And uh, we, if said so there are about four children in each class, then uh, each of these teachers are assigned to two children and they are to mentor these children. And in the process of mentoring, uh, they also meet uh, the, the two children assigned to them. They meet their parents. Uh, they basically tell them that, you know, we are mentoring your children. So is there any specific prayer needs that you have? Any challenges that you're facing with your child or the child is facing any difficulties, anything that they can work along with them, help them pray. And also we assure them that, you know, whatever they're sharing is going to uh, be confidential. So this way, mentoring also um, uh, you know, it helps us in mentoring the children, helps the children's church ministers in mentoring the children. It also gives an assurance to the uh, parents that, you know, uh, that the, uh, the children's church ministers are more involved in their children's life, praying for them, uh, trying to help them, uh, you know, uh, to uh, help their children overcome the challenges or their uh, behavioral problems that they are having, the difficulties they are um, facing. Uh, you know, uh, the last couple of years, we've also had WhatsApp groups uh, for each class. And after uh, every Sunday, you know, the the CC ministers, they uh, just share in brief what uh, was the, what lesson was taught, what is the application, remind the parents that this is a memory verse the child has to learn and help them to apply uh, this, what they have learned throughout the week. So, you know, just involving the parents, um, even as we are nurturing the children uh, in their spiritual upbringing and also getting their parents uh, involved in their spiritual growth and upbringing. Okay, the fifth uh, uh, foundation is that um, children's ministry is about serving kids. Okay, children's ministry is about serving kids. Okay, so uh, you will say that it's quite obvious children's ministry is all about ministering to um, uh, children. Um, but what I really mean here is, you know, putting the children's spiritual needs ahead of our own. Okay. Our work is to put their ultimate spiritual needs ahead of our own, which means that, uh, you know, um, we need to be very diligent and sincere in planning uh, the children's ministry, uh, not just doing things randomly on a Sunday morning, uh, but, you know, planning everything a year ahead, planning for the entire year, uh, you know, uh, having the curriculum ready for the entire year. And, you uh, 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 you know, the teachers who are given, uh, the, the children's church ministers who are given the lessons, not just, uh, you know, looking at it uh, on Saturday evening, but, uh, you know, uh, preparing it from the uh, from Monday till Saturday, just going through those lessons, running it through their minds, uh, using uh, so that they can uh, think about creative ways and methods uh, uh, to teach their lesson. Uh, also, you know, organizing activities and programs that would help uh, build them in the word of God and in their faith and their relationship with God. Uh, also just plan that, uh, you know, uh, children's church is not just having fun with children, showing them some videos, having some games and coloring and some puzzles, but it's all about teaching them deeper truths in God's word, uh, mentoring children, uh, also praying for uh, the children that, uh, you know, uh, God has entrusted to you as sheep under your care, um, just praying for them. Uh, if they don't come one Sunday, calling up and finding out what happened, you know, if they're having tests or exams, calling them and praying for them over the phone. So it's uh, not just, uh, you know, one hour on a Sunday where we uh, are ministering to them, but it's uh, it's all about serving them uh, throughout, uh, you know, the year, uh, just ministering to them, praying for them and um, 
uh, seeing, uh, you know, they grow in their spiritual walk with uh, God. So children's ministry is all about uh, serving children. Okay. So these are uh, the foundations, the five foundations uh, that are essential for all church-based ministry to uh, children. Any doubts? Any questions? No doubts? Okay. Okay, then we'll move on to the developmental uh, needs of um, children. Uh, now you might be thinking, why do we need to look at the developmental needs of children uh, when we are ministering to them in children's church? Uh, 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 well, uh, you know, we, we know that God has built uh, into children a pattern uh, for development. So we need to understand, uh, you know, what's typical of each age and stage of development uh, that the, the children go through. So even as we minister to them, you know, uh, on every Sunday, we will as uh, children's church ministers, as uh, Sunday school teachers, we'll have a better understanding of the needs of uh, the children in that specific age group. Now, suppose you're uh, uh, teach, going to be teaching or ministering to children in grade eight or in grade five or grade six or grade uh, four, grade one, you need to know what is the, the, the you know, the intellectual, the physical, the, the spiritual need, social emotional needs of the children in that specific age group. Now, why is it important? Because when we have a better understanding of their uh, developmental needs of the children in that specific age group, we will know what, um, uh, how to narrate, uh, uh, you know, uh, a narrative from the Bible, a story from the Bible, uh, you know, how to, what are the games that we need to use? What are the activities we can use? Uh, how we need to to explain to them the theological concepts or the truths in God's word, what activities will best fit them uh, in the specific uh, uh, age group. So it'll just basically help um, uh, those who are ministering to that specific age group uh, to prepare their lessons well and the activities um, accordingly. Okay. Now, before we look at the development needs of children in different age groups, um, let's look at the developmental needs that are common uh, to all children, okay? So we look at a few developmental needs that are common uh, uh, to all children, okay? Uh, the first one is the need for physical activity, okay? The need for physical activity. Children need to exercise and develop their growing bodies through physical activities that develop both their large muscles um, and their small muscles and their motor skills, okay? Now, what is the large uh, mus uh, motor skills? It concerns the development of their larger muscles, that is their hands and their legs, okay? So uh, these um, large motor skills concern the development of large muscle movements that are responsible for running, jumping, throwing, hopping, uh, you know, uh, balancing on one foot, uh, etc. Okay. Now, small motor skills are responsible for, uh, you know, grasping, uh, holding either a pen, pencil, crayons, uh, or cutting, uh, you know, or doing some craft activity with their hands, with their fingers. That is all about their small, small motor skills. So we need to ensure that, um, you know, our lessons that we are doing uh, will cater to their physical activity, not just having children sit down there and, you know, um, uh, just uh, uh, you teaching them and their listening was is not going to really help uh, children. So how do we, um, you know, cater to this developmental need? It's, uh, you know, during worship time, have them stand up, uh, clap, dance, do the actions. Uh, then, you know, um, have a game, um, 
not every week we just we plan you know uh, after every worship session on one sunday in a month we have uh, game time for uh, all the children where we divide them into groups and have uh, a, a fun game uh, or an activity where they learn something um, and then even in classes you know uh, for every lesson we have a attention getter uh, or we have an object lesson uh, when we we are uh, Uh, learning how to create a lesson plan i will explain what uh, an attention getter is or an object lesson is attention getter is basically anything that uh, will get catch their attention uh, for the topic that you're going to teach them it can be a short game a quick game it can be uh, an object lesson it can be a small skit or it can be a small quiz or uh, anything and you know just involving children uh, moving their hands their legs uh, moving around uh, so um, and also having some craft activity for them uh, coloring uh, you know um, and just writing something i know coloring uh, smaller children in smaller age groups would like it uh, but craft activity you know the older kids will like it i always assume that the children in 8 9 10 10th grade uh, don't like craft craft activity but i was quite amazed to see when we have our kids conference that they really enjoy uh, you know their craft time they look forward for it and uh, they get so involved in doing it and they're quite excited so just having an activity for them or or uh, you know having a collage or anything that they can do or enacting a small skit uh, just involving their uh, their movements of their uh, uh, you know large um, uh, 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 muscles or their their smaller muscles will just help them uh, uh, learn better okay the second um, developmental need that is common to all children is the need for um, the need for competence and uh, achievement okay um now it's common for many children especially for uh, teenagers uh, those in you know 6th to 10th grade uh, where they become very self conscious and um, and also as they're growing and there's a lot of changes that are happening uh, physically mentally emotionally they're quite unsure about um, you know their self value their self image uh, they're also unsure about their talents and their abilities uh, so we need to even this can be uh, for the younger kids uh, of course they are quite uh, excited uh, and they want to try out everything and uh, involve themselves in everything possible but uh, we need to create opportunities uh, for children where they can explore a wide variety of experiences and interests to use their um talents uh, they need opportunities to demonstrate also their talents what they are good at their skills um to others uh, so that you know just builds up a lot of self confidence a self uh, uh, a good self value and a good healthy self image about what they can do um well so at apc children's church uh, we create opportunities for children uh, to use their talents um and we provide them opportunities to even explore uh, their talents uh, so let me give you a couple of examples how we do that now when we have a um, general time where all the children are gathered uh, during the worship time we have our children uh, leading worship sometimes some of them uh, sing uh, uh, our vocalists in the worship team uh some of them play instruments of course we have uh, you know uh we hold sessions for them uh, uh and uh, uh you know uh, where we help them to learn they also are part of the worship team where they come early and they uh, uh they they practice along with the worship leaders uh, some of them have even led worship um so you know we just give them these opportunities to uh, uh build their talents for them to show their talents also it will encourage other children that you know they can also learn uh to play different musical instruments uh, to also sing to be part of the worship team then some of them you know we get them to pray for the offering uh to make the declaration uh some of them help us in projecting the powerpoint uh, during worship team uh, you know a few kids the older kids help us in um, 
pack up of the children's church, packing up all the uh, equipment. Of course, we have to do that in our church because uh, we don't have our own facility where we uh, meet. And um, we also, you know, get them to pray for others, minister to others. Uh, of course, children are shy to minister in a, in a larger setting, in a larger gathering. So in their own classes, we get them to pray for each other, uh, you know, pray for their needs, uh, lay hands on others who are sick. Uh, so just creating opportunities where they are learning. We also, uh, for a couple of years, had... Uh, uh, this new initiative that we had introduced called the Kingdom Builders Club. Um, and we had these, um, you know, um, uh, different um, uh, activities like art and craft, singing, choreography, uh, ministering, healing and deliverance, uh, memorizing and oratory skills. So we had children choose uh, and of course evangelism, uh, which all the children had to take. That was one thing that if all the children were included in uh, evangelism. Uh, but the, these other uh, clubs, they had to choose whichever they liked, whichever they would be interested in. And uh, we would teach them the specifics in that uh, uh, specific club like uh, singing, train them to sing, uh, you know, uh, whether it's choreography, uh, dance steps, dance movements, uh, ministering, healing, and deliverance. We took them through that book, uh, you know, pastor's book on how to minister healing and deliverance, then memorizing scripture and uh, speaking. So getting them ready to preach. Now, uh, children chose their specific clubs, but it was not just something that is skill based, but through these different uh, clubs, uh, you know, we got them to hear, uh, you know, uh, uh, what God is speaking to them, uh, ministering to them uh, through this and how they can, uh, you know, through the help of the Holy Spirit, minister prophetically as well. So art and craft, if we get them, teach them how to draw and paint, well, but also we tell them that when you are painting, you know, uh, just ask the Holy Spirit to um, tell you who to, what to paint, uh, who this painting uh, uh, should go to, who they should hand over this painting to, and what is the prophetic word they need to release to their, uh, to the painting. Okay, so even if it's singing, that you know they're not just singing harmoniously. Uh, but even as they're singing, you know, they're praying that God, even as they're singing the song, that, you know, the people that they're singing to should be ministered uh, for, or delivered from uh, from fear or anxiety or worry or somebody who's going through uh, financial problems uh, should be blessed. Uh, those who are, uh, you know, um, uh, going through relationship problems, they'll find the peace uh, uh, and the strength of God, those who need encouragement. So just singing over the people. So, you know, it's just more prophetically releasing uh, prophetic words, uh, ministering prophetically uh, through these um, clubs. Okay. Uh, another thing that we do is, uh, you know, um, skits. We have skits. And I told you we had, uh, you know, the skits on genealogy of Jesus where they had to choose and they all had to enact. Uh, um, we also have Bible quiz uh, uh, where, um, you know, they are put into different teams and, uh, you know, they uh, they get the confidence to answer, to learn, uh, Bible match. In kids' conference, we have different talent competitions, uh, singing, uh, playing instruments, art and craft, um, you know, speaking uh, something about what uh, they have learned, oratory uh, speeches. So we have these various competitions, and children find uh, their talents or they are given the opportunity to use their talents um, and also not just use it so that others know and for them to build their self-confidence, but how through these talents and through the skills that God has given them, they can uh, minister prophetically, they can uh, minister healing, they can min they can give a word of knowledge, they can give a word of wisdom, and, uh, you know, they can uh, just minister to people, okay? So it's good that uh, uh, you use uh, and create such activities and programs um, uh, for them to, uh, you know, enhance their ta talents and also for them to know uh, their areas of skill and expertise that God has, uh, and the talents that God has blessed them in, how they can use it uh, for God's kingdom, to build God's kingdom, okay? 
The next developmental need that is common for all age groups is that, um, you know, the need for self-definition, okay? Uh, children, all children are growing and they need lots of opportunity to explore who and what they are becoming and how they relate to the world around them. So, uh, you know, uh, it's important that um, they build their identity not on the things of the world, uh, not on what social media is telling them, but they're building their identity on, um, uh, on God's word and uh, what God spoken about them or who they are in Christ. They're finding their identity in Christ. So we teach children this uh, course on uh, who they are in Christ. Uh, we also, you know, have teen sessions for children in uh, seventh grade or even from sixth grade onwards to 10th grade. Uh, uh, these teen sessions handles uh, various topics and challenges that teenagers face like uh, self-image, self-value, peer pressure, uh, media, its influence on them, uh, you know, temptation and, um, uh, you know, all of those things. So uh, it's important that, um, you know, we're just not giving them, uh, teaching them uh, or narrating to them stories from God's word, but also get them to build their identity on who they are in Christ uh, uh, and look for their identity in God's word and uh, strengthen their self-image and self-value by building it on God's word and taking them through various uh, sessions that would help them. Okay. The next developmental need, which is common for all age groups, is the need for creative expression. So as children, bodies and minds grow and change, they become more involved uh, in uh, in the world that is beyond their home and family. So we need to create um, creative uh, opportunities for, uh, for them to create creatively express, um, you know, um, what they are going through. Uh, they express their talents, opportunities to help children develop and understand and uh, an acceptance of themselves, even as they speak, write, sing, dance, uh, you know, uh, enact skits, um, uh, you know, just to express their feelings, their interests, their thoughts, their talents, and their um, abilities, okay? So, you know, I've uh, given you a lot of examples that we do at APC Children's Church. Now, I'm basically giving you examples from APC Children's Church because I'm involved there. You can talk about that. I'm sure you have, uh, you know, you're part of your own churches where they have all of these creative uh, activities and programs where, you know, uh, they involve children to help them to... Uh, you know, to grow deeper in God's word and to express their talents um, as well, okay? The fifth one is, um, sorry. The fifth one is the need for positive social um, interaction. Um, you know, although the family is of uh, primary importance to children, they all need increasing opportunities to express a positive relationship with uh, their friends uh, and their mentors uh, or uh, adults, uh, uh, you know, outside their family. Um, and these um, relationships that they build uh, will can provide for them comfort, support, and security uh, as they experience new ideas, uh, uh, views, values, and feelings. So uh, in our children's church, we ensure that, uh, you know, uh, children um, uh, are friends with each other in their class. Uh, they uh, relate to each other. They cause uh, they you know form friendship bonds with each other they're not just in their own cliques uh, you know when somebody new comes to in to make them feel loved accepted uh, be friendly with them and also um, you know, we have these mentoring, mentoring sessions, which I, uh, uh, which I mentioned to you, that the, the, the CC ministers uh, uh, or the children's church teachers, you know, mentoring each child in their class where they're personally involved in what they're going through, in their struggles, uh, you know, praying for them, giving them, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, encouraging them, uh, giving them solutions to the problems that they're going through. So uh, children, are uh, able to, you know, um, um, build relationships uh, 
um, with adults and with um, others, uh, their peers, their friends, um, where they're able to find comfort, uh, support and security um, uh, in their times of uh, need and their times of difficulties. This is uh, away from their uh, family. Okay. The next one is that um, uh, the need for structure and clear limits, the need for structure and clear limits. Now, um, in children's church, we need to also, you know, have some kind of uh, do's and don'ts, um, you know, place clear structures and um, clear limits that children have or a framework in which they need to uh, uh, you know, uh, the framework in which they have how they can behave, what they need to do, what is acceptable behavior, what is not. Um, also, uh, you know, give them clear uh, uh, structure and clear limits to help them develop their skills, such as their, uh, you know, what they are responsible for, what is their responsibility, um, you know, uh, how they can express their creativeness in them, uh, and how they can show forth as being uh, trustworthy and uh, dependable. Now, you know, so we give them certain responsibilities that they can do to show that, uh, you know, they, are, they can be dependent on, they can uh, prove themselves to be trustworthy, like learning memory verses. We give them scripture portions throughout the week, uh, which they can learn and come back to class and share one or two things that they have uh, learned through the scripture passages. Uh, another thing is, you know, um, uh, even as we teach them and give them certain things that they can apply or they choose how, uh, how they're going to apply what they have learned um, uh, for that class, you know, to enact upon it or to uh, act upon it and um, come back the next Sunday and share how they have applied what they learned um, last week. So, you know, we need to keep all of these structures uh, uh, and, you know, uh, spell it out for them so that they know uh, what is required of them uh, so they can act responsible and they can show themselves to be dependable and uh, trustworthy, okay? Uh, the seventh one and the last um, developmental need that is common uh, to all children is a strong attachment with positive adults, okay? Um, so it's important that we, uh, in children's church, uh, Sunday school, that we, uh, you know, build stronger bonds of uh, relationships where we're sharing each other's life, sharing the lives of uh, uh, our children, uh, sharing our lives with them. They're sharing their lives with us um, and sharing our lives with each other so that we can pray for each other, we can support each other, uh, we can just help each other. And also maintaining confidentiality. Like, you know, if the child is sharing something and doesn't want their parents to know about it or that, you know, uh, they have has been some behavioral problem uh, in the in their class or something that they have done, you know, just uh, helping them through those behavioral problems. And if they don't want their parents to know about it, then just um, helping them through it, um, you know, just maintaining uh, that kind of uh, uh, trust uh, with the child um, so that the child knows, yes, you know, there is a teacher, there is an adult uh, that I can go back to who will love me, accept me in spite of what uh, wrong that I have done and will help me through this um, and uh, you know I can trust him or her uh, by sharing what I have uh, done so uh, it can be a place where uh, we can get them into a stronger relationship uh, with their maker and their savior and their God and also we can build a strong uh, relationship uh, with them okay so these are the developmental needs that are common to any uh, age group. Um, okay, we don't have time uh, to look at the developmental needs of children uh, ages three to four. Okay, maybe we can look at that in the next class. Uh, any questions, any doubts? Any questions, any doubts, anyone has? Oh, no, America. Clear? Okay. Uh, anyone has any questions?
Anything you'd like to ask? Any clarifications? Yes, success. Hello, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. My lecturer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please, is it possible for us to have the? Yeah, uh, actually, I entered the lecture late, late because of my time schedule in Nigeria. Is it possible for you also get the presentation? Is it uh, possible? Can Can you say that again, please? Uh, yeah, the the uh, presentation. The presentation. Yes. The presentation. Uh, Is it possible for us to get it? Yeah, sure. I'll um, I'll put it up um, on your uh, on the classroom page or the stream page, and you can access it there. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, but all yeah, of these, you. Um, uh, you know, what I've presented, all of these are there in your notes. Okay. Okay. Everything then. is there in All the right. notes. Uh, just for uh, you know, uh, for us to follow through in a better way, I have just put up the points. But all of okay. this uh, content is there in your notes. All right. So even if you All don't right. have Thank this you, presentation, you can look at your notes. Everything is there. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If there's no questions, then uh, uh, we'll stop class here. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a blessed day, and I'll see you uh, next class. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I'm grateful.